I take great pleasure and privilege to be speaking at this forum to August doctors and patient advocates and colleagues and you know caregivers and survivors of type one diabetes, and uh, this is such a unique opportunity for us to sort of explore together what is the India perspective. First of all, shout out to Zikiti and uh, Sana. uh you know for their strong stories uh i mean the indian story is is very very similar i must say uh all right so let's quickly set context into what i would like to share with you today over the next 10 minutes or so i know that you know when i was asked to talk about advocacy and patient advocacy and in 10 minutes it felt like you know this is the universe in a teacup but i'm going to try it uh I would like maybe in the next ten minutes or so to set context to patient advocacy in India in terms of why is it relevant, you know, what are our pressing issues, and then I would like to move on uh, to sort of explore synergies. I mean, what can August doctors like you, you know, how could we come together? Because one of the favorite sayings in my community is "stronger together." And if you've met any person with diabetes in a diabetes community in India, whatever they call, we could be diabetes blue circle, dia. you know we could be jdf but we all say we're stronger together so i would like to take you know the opportunity of using this platform to explore ways in which we could be stronger together so let's dive right into it so what you're looking at in your screen is uh, a little bit of a context of a person with diabetes and you know our life like the i mean you're looking at it like a pizza chart or a pie chart as you see so at the center of it the largest slice is self awareness you know the consciousness of living with type 1 diabetes what does that mean for us you know how do we self regulate how are we autonomous in managing a lifelong chronic medical condition you know that requires a lot of cognitive decision making in terms of meal dosing you know you have to basically substitute for your pancreas so there's that and then we move on to the next layer where we're living with you know families or or somebody who we are in a romantic relationship with an intimate relationship with so when we're looking at that layer we're looking at of course we're engaging constantly with a person possibly a caregiver who's living with our diabetes as well and oftentimes there are a lot of codependencies in scenarios like this it could be a financial codependency where that person pays for insulin right it could be a physical codependency where uh, that person requires to be a part of you know uh, even the insulin giving process or maybe helping out when there is an emergency like a dka or a hypoglycemic episode right so there is the family layer or the relationship layer then we move on to uh, the immediate social circle layer that we all live in which is our friends which could be our neighbors peer groups so peer support peer pressure all of this forms a huge section of the identity of living with diabetes i mean there is a whole perception created among our peers so a lot of us are all right with identifying as diabetic there is a very large volume of persons living with diabetes don't want to identify that they are a person living with diabetes and a lot of that sort of hinges on the kind of circles we go on and their perception of diabetes and then you know things get a little more serious in the next layer which is a uh, kids who go to school or college or workplaces when we talking about team and adults and here's where discrimination comes in we're talking about kids who go to school and at the very outset you know and this is first i'm i'm taking the liberty to share voices and stories from the tons of diabetes communities we all work together in india we're a part of multiple whatsapp groups we swap stories and i think today we have uh, so many people who run communities in this call as well we have nupur from blue circle we have my colleagues prashant who is a huge patient voice in india so uh they will also tell you that the thing we hear from mothers is that you know my kid is denied admission in school because you know the school doesn't want to take responsibility for the fact that my child has t1d or we're talking about even post admission push back for children wearing their medical devices whether it's a pump or a sensor there was this huge row a couple of years ago where uh, there was a school uh, that actually asked a child to sort of disconnect their insulin pump and you know at the end of the four hour paper the child went into dka so there are these kind of pushbacks in you know schools as well then there is this whole row around you know how and where is a child going to inject insulin and how is that going to play out when there are other children in the school hypomanagement and of course in the workplace the issues are well a little similar but there are discriminations you know associated with uh you know even employment where people once you know they uh, were to disclose the fact that they live with a condition like type 1 diabetes a lot of workplaces have pushed back and not hired them 
then you have the whole issue of again once again storing insulin in the workplace taking insulin in the workplace leaves regarding you know personal health care health insurance so there are a lot of these subjects uh, where you know a place like school or work you know finds its intersectionality for a person living with type 1 diabetes and then of course uh, there is a larger systemic issue where you know we're all sort of citizens of a country and you know we're all you know dependent on the government for support and then therefore we are of course having more universal issues like insulin pricing access to medicine we have access to technology right and then again there is recognition that the community is fighting for to be recognized as a disability tax breaks so the list is endless but this is why if you're looking at this whole pizza chart these are the contexts from where you know the core causes of advocacy have actually stemmed from uh allow me to say that it's very ironical that this is a pizza chart because pizza of course is the most difficult food group for a diabetic to bolus for am i right uh so therefore we sort of move on to why awareness in t1d has become so so central right uh looking at the whole pie structure of how we integrate into society some of the largest issues that you know groups discovered or groups of diabetes uh, people living with diabetes discovered in india was isolation i think isolation was the reason why most groups somewhere around early 2016 or 17 were born in fact uh, i've lived with type 1 diabetes for 27 years but I didn't know any other group apart from JDF and Kudos for that JDF in Bombay that actually you know worked with other people you know with T1s they had programs for T1s nada which is why I think around early 17 um, we were one of the first people who banded together to create a patient uh, support group uh, those days Nupur also helped out with the whole KEM story and we started Club One Diabetes of course she moved on to create Blue Circle Jazz started Blue uh, Diabetes around the same time 17 18 Apurva, Jyotsna, Sahil, and a bunch of others started something called Dia in Delhi. Mridula started T1D Fighters. So there were a lot of groups born around the same time, you know, which was sort of triggered by isolation. There was an immediate need to know other people living with the condition. You know, it was a need to go and make friends to sort of have another person to relate to. And what we found out, you know, since then and now. is that isolation while it sort of provided a lower motivation to self care being in a community being in a group looking at other people who look like you lived like you sounded like you uh, ironically increased motivation for self care which is why today we have so many vast groups patient groups you know patient created groups support groups in india uh, that do you know uh, that are created both for persons living with diabetes and their caregivers all right then we moved on to other subjects that we heard from each other about social stigma and a large voice that we heard was of course from kids who were afraid of being bullied by other kids parents who were sort of suffering you know in the school authorities we also heard from young people uh who were being discriminated against in the arranged marriage system so the, again the community stepped in you know we have an initiative in south of india you can probably come back and look at our website later there is a wonderful community sweet souls started this initiative where they wanted to create a group for arranged marriage alliances for persons with uh you know type 1 diabetes there's a t1d matrimony system available i'm aware that jdf does something similar as well uh we also have multiple groups it doesn't matter who the group is but i know all groups in india do this where if there's a mother who uh, you know voices out saying that there's trouble uh, somebody from the group who's qualified will step in to liaison with school authorities so this is how social stigma is managed uh discrimination in schools and workplaces of course with workplaces it's a, it's a more sophisticated conversation so we talk to various employers to see if they can roll out policies and i do that for a living so we try we call it dei you know diversity equity and inclusion in corporate packages so we try to talk to corporates to include t1d in the diversity inclusion initiative so that you know insurance is included so this is of course a pebble in the sea a rock in the sea then we look at persons you know living with type 1 diabetes living in isolation you know feeling different from others feeling stigmatized a little bit and we often see you know lower self esteem in people and with the pandemic we've seen a skyrocket of mental health issues in the pandemic then of course there is this thing that is so less talked about which is that a person living with diabetes is in a constant state of anxiety we have these constant cognitive burdens of you know dose decision what is my sugar every 5 minutes 
you know uh, do i need to correct my sugar you know staying in range there is a constant cognitive burden that just comes with diabetes management and invariably we all burn out okay and then of course there is a larger piece that adds to the anxiety and i speak from personal experience when i say that there is a very real fear of mortality in all of us and then of course there are systemic challenges like sana beautifully pointed out and ckt beautifully pointed out which concern access to health care the experience of living in a bombay with diabetes or bangalore with diabetes is so different from somebody who lives in tirunelveli someone who lives in madurai someone who lives in a small place called sarchi in himachal who has to drive for 8 hours to chandigarh to buy insulin right so access to health care today is a huge challenge in india and even if we do have access to health care the costs of health care are absolutely crazy considering you know uh, we don't have any public support we don't have any governmental subsidies uh, of course that's a more sophisticated conversation i mean in 16 we had zero government support you know in 22 of course with a lot of rallying from patient groups governments have started including certain kinds of insulin and dpco we have a lot of free government schemes but again there is a huge ground to cover there as far as the india story is concerned uh quick segue into a little something that you know we put together at the t1d foundation we looked at so many voices that were rallying together and we thought everybody has to join the voice so somewhere in the pandemic and t1df has a lot of techies with us we have iitians who sort of work at the foundation so uh, we put together something called a community finder tool is there on our website the link is what you're looking at just mean this is a really simple tool if you go to let's say you're in pune then it would show you blue circle if you're over in ahmedabad it would show you jaibesti if you're in bhavnagar it would show you jdf bhavnagar if you're in Chhat- this bird it would show you the t1d group in chatisgarh so that's that's what we did as you know when we put together this tool what it simply does is that it lists patients and caregiver groups all over india okay so there is a pin option and there is a drop down option you never have to be left behind you never have to know who is your nearest voice you just have to get onto a site and you'll know you'll find who is the nearest group uh the the group the tool contains name and contact details you know of each group the person who's in charge so that you know they will integrate you into their groups it sets out their social media handles for you to follow and know what's the nearest event going on near you um it's completely free obviously because you know it's it's, it's for the community it's by the community and it's easy to access so um in this kind of a backdrop patient advocacy in india has grown where you have all of these wonderful groups and every group i know today is striving very very hard and i speak from personal experience they go to they go to camps you know they sort of participate in insulin distribution schemes they educate on the ground like especially i have seen i see pictures every day from various groups whether it's you know jazz doing work in gujarat whether it's sweet souls you know lakshmi and all in hyderabad where they go and speak in schools i know for a fact that prashant just came from a huge road trip in the south where he was sort of talking to people in kerala parents in kerala i know udan does a lot of work you know in maharashtra so uh, there are so many of these patient groups that are already doing such fantastic work how can you fit in i know you're a doctor and you know you are our first point of contact we come to you you know because often times we may not know each other but we definitely know you so how can you a doctor who's watching this content make this better for us i would say that you do use our community finder and please participate in the community if you're not already doing one uh, i cannot say this in the same breath because a lot of our communities were built with the blessings of our doctors i know for a fact that uh, the first community t1d was set up with the help uh, in pune at club one was with dr yajnik dr banshi is such a huge patient voice today uh, a lot of patient leaders so to so to speak in india today were all like founded on his platform like he made this whole wild the i thing and you know he's always given us forums to speak and you know he's been a part of our growth story dr archana has always been very very supportive dr mohan has always reached out uh, there are a lot of doctors and because we have you know grown on your shoulders but i think all hands on the deck is what the community needs right now participate in a community if there's none around you foster a community if there's a small community if there's none create a community all right do encourage your parents in fact to even set up a community Uh, again no rocket science you can come to our website we are all about community creation we do have a program where we foster little communities we give them the tools again it's completely you know open source to set up communities uh what you can do is you can help create relationships with your patients for example uh all of us we need insulin you know we need uh, 
uh, some of us who wear a CGM, we need leave days, we need strips, right? And we don't know how to go about it. We don't have, you know, the means to have a, an affordable way to do this. And some of us can't even afford insulin. So you can forge these relationships for us. You can sort of set up an ecosystem where, you know, we can access uh, healthcare products and, you know, healthcare facilities in an affordable way. I would request doctors here to also look at, uh, you know, even a private community kind of a situation. Start your own community within your patient cohort where you do knowledge sharing routinely with your patients over VCs. Talk to them about, you know, insulin therapy, how to, you know, how to use this, how to use that, whether a CGM makes sense, how to weed their grass, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, join your patients uh, for their events, especially if they're a part of a community. Every city today I know has a run. Right, where T1Ds are running every month. So join them for these events. All right. But most importantly, here's where you can really make an impact. Okay. You can create opportunities for representation. I know a lot of you are sitting on boards where you take decisions that impact patients on the ground. Allow a patient voice to be on that board. Okay. Call one of us. You know, let's let's have a a, a partnership between a doctor and a patient to create opportunities for these representations. You know, allow our voice on these forums. All right. Uh, we look at the impact of your T1D programs. I know all of you are rolling out. So many of you are rolling out, you know, schemes where you're distributing insulin for patients. Maybe you could relook at the impact of your schemes to see who more could you include, who else would benefit. All right. Like, is it really reaching it? How is it doing it on the ground? And maybe you could engage some of us to be your eyes and ears for that sort of thing. All right. But I guess uh, the bottom line is that the need for Indian communities today, irrespective of what we're called, is to join hands with you to bring legitimacy to our cause. Another important way where you could actually do that is that today there is a lot of public advocacy that's going on for diabetes where we're talking to the regulator. We're making constant representations on various subjects, whether it's insulin costing, whether it's access to insulin. In 2016, the regulator didn't even know the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. We've come thus far where now the regulator is asking us, oh, I gave you a glargine in DPCO, why is that not enough? Okay, so in these kind of conversations is where you come in, bring in legitimacy to our cause, you know, maybe be the liaison between the government and the patient voice to see what is the need of the hour, what is the pulse of the hour, you know, how, why does the community really need what it needs. So join us because like we say in the community, together we're stronger and while I sign off, fun fact, I was just speaking of events. Next month for the Type 1 Diabetes Foundation is a huge event in Chennai. The Chennai Marathon is sort of uh, dedicating their event to us. So, yeah, I mean, that's happening on the 8th of December. So if you're in and around Chennai, you know, run for diabetes, just not from it. And all of you are welcome to join that. So that's that. You What you're looking at are the faces of my wonderful team at T1DS India. We are a platform. We we are also a part of multiple ground communities. But our main aim, we exist, is to be a part of meaningful conversations like this and to advocate, you know, for diabetes policy at a national level. With that, we're at time, and I give the baton back to Bimaka. Thank you for having us.